All right, everybody. Hey, uh, really excited to be talking uh, today with our gal, Amy. She is a master performance and development coach. And as all of you know, I love development coaches. I love performance coaches. Uh, one of the things as, as I was going through my previous profession is that you always got the best of the best. And it's an interesting thing when you get out of sports and you get into business, people often forget how important coaches are and mentors are. And uh, Amy, you, you have got quite the resume here, lady. I mean, it's uh, easily a couple pages long. I could go into all of that, but uh, first of all, welcome to the show and thank you so much for uh, coming on today. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited. So I hope I'll, I'll bring as much value as I can to your audience. So thank you. Well, there's no doubt that you're going to do that. Uh, you're the founder of uh, Rules Rewritten, Rebellious and the Rebel Code. And first of all, I love the titles. Those are all like, they're, they're, they're super catchy and they're also very intriguing. Um, give us a quick history, uh, you know, who you are, uh, what you've done over the, over your, your career and, and then why is this such a passion for you? Ooh, yeah. Like, boy, <laughs> let me see if I can't boil that down. There's a lot point. there, right? <laughs> yeah, there is. And, and, and it's quite a story. And so um, I have a passion for helping people access the their authentic selves and getting rid of all of the weight that life throws on us, right? In order to be top tier performers, we can't carry around programs that aren't serving us. Now, I'm also a rebel at heart. I've been a rebel my whole life. And by that, what I mean is that I've always rewritten the rules, right? If you hand me rules, I'm going to hand them back to you written better, right? Because um, I want to do life on my terms. Um, so that means that generally from a client perspective, I work well with other rebels, right? Those innovators and outliers, and um, they're generally very purpose-driven, and they're also out there doing those unlandish, unreasonable things <laughs> that nobody else is willing to dare to attempt, right? Um, because I've always been there uh, with that kind of wild determination, uh, it, it sent me down a route of exploration because also I came from a not so great past or history that wasn't um, something that didn't leave some scars, right? Now I reject that for myself, but uh, those challenges and traumatic events early in my life also caused me a lot of cognitive dissonance and just limitations. And so here I was this rebel, I wanted to go after life and go do big things. And also I'm running these programs that were freezing me up, holding me back, procrastinating, avoiding distraction, imposter syndrome, um, depression, I mean, just all the things. And, I, and it was just driving me crazy. And so I wanted to understand why does this happen with human mind? So this started all the way back in my early, um, late high school, college days, to be quite honest, became obsessed with all things human behavior. How did we work from neuroscience all the way into quantum physics, all the way into meta health and all the modalities that are around all of that body of work to figure out myself, like how the hell can I work better and what I do and not have these things holding me back, right? Yeah. Um, and that led into a corporate career doing that. So since then, I've been an entrepreneur. So 20 years of entrepreneurial pursuits because I'm a rebel. I can't work in a box, right? Yeah. So I have to go do my own businesses. But the, the passion I've had with, with human performance is what has enabled me to really do that. So we can pour that into all of our clients, trainees, hires, no matter which business we're in, um, to help them perform at an optimal level, which is you talk about sports analogies, you know, coming to the field with nothing left on the sideline, nothing left on the field, a game mentally, physically, emotionally, and congruently. Um, that way you're really ready to play in every arena, right? Top tier athletes, they come ready to play and they live a disciplined system of performance to accomplish that. If you're top tier in business, then wouldn't you do the same thing? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's who we are. We help people rewrite the rules of life so they can be optimal performers. Be, I be love it. Go ahead, keep going. I, was, I love what you're saying so far. So yeah, keep going. <laughs> that's it. You got it. That's, that's me in a nutshell, as best I can describe it, without going into all the, the little micro details. <laughs> well, let's go into, uh, let's kind of go a little bit deeper into this. And so like for to you then, like what defines a coach then? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boy, okay. So I will put my arrogance hat on for a minute. <laughs> There's a 180 degree spectrum of coaching, right? There's just so many varieties of that. People try to put it in and chunk it up into one description and you really can't. So I'll come at it from this angle. If you are someone and you believe that coaching would help you get to the next level, then the key is to decide coaching for what purpose, right? Because you can hire a coach that's very niche specific, a coach for uh, coaching on your sales skills, a coach um, specifically to leadership, a coach specifically to um, your you know, finances, okay? 
if you think about it this way, um, I'll use baseball since we were talking about that earlier, right? Mm -hmm. I love baseball. If I was a top tier player in baseball, then I would have multiple coaches. I would have a running coach, a hitting coach, a batting coach, right? And also I would likely have a performance coach, which is right. what we do, right? Um, the performance coach is going to help me do really well at each one of those things. Because really the performance coach is about making you a better performer, bringing right. yourself to the game. And also it doesn't mean I wouldn't also need a batting coach, right? Mm -hmm. Who is niche specific on my skills in batting. So I first wanna just kind of address that. The second thing is that a good coach period, whatever you decide, so coaching for what purpose, and then you're just like, okay, well, I need a coach to coach me on my nutrition or personal training or whatever that is. Great, hire the coach that's going to truly invest in you, okay? They're going to get to know who you are they're going to practice masterful questions more than anything else. And they listen intently to who you are and how you reply so that they can address coaching to match who you are and where you want to go. Coaching is not somebody who just rails at you to follow a checklist of things to do. Mm -hmm. This is not coaching. You, you can't get to that until you first make sure that their mind's in the game. Tactical deployment is after first being sure that the person is aligned with what their coaching, what the what the coaching is for, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I, when you when I'm reading the stuff about you, and then of course even just words that you've been saying so far, you use a lot of really powerful words. And one of the things you talked about is just like you you consider yourself a rebel, and and see and you attract other rebel entrepreneurs, right? Yeah. Can you go into like so what does that I mean? What does that really mean? I mean it's not that. When we think of rebel, it's kind of like uh, people that are defiant or people that are, you know, go against the flow all the time. Is that what you mean? Or like, what's your archetype look like when it comes to the, the rebel entrepreneur? You know, I love that question because here's the problem with the word rebel or the word rebellious, right? Is uh -huh. that there's this negative connotation that comes with that word. Like yeah. you just kind of hit on that, right? And so people kind of shy away from that. Like they were always the rebel growing up, but they shied away because they were, they got in trouble. They got punished. They got disciplined. They got told their hand slapped. No, you can't do that. Right. And so we get all these shoulds and expectations thrown on us of how we should be in society versus being the Elon Musks and the Richard Bransons of the world and going out and doing these crazy things you know they're celebrated now but at one point they weren't so celebrated they were told well you can't go be that way yeah. so i like to kind of shake that up a little bit to be rebellious simply means that you're willing to step out of beyond the status quo like you're willing to step out beyond the expectations that others put on you to design your own it doesn't mean that you're rebellious that you don't you know, honor society and treat others yeah. well, right? Yeah. It simply means that you're not okay with what's being forced on you. And instead you're gonna go be creative and innovative to create what does work for you. And society says, but most of society says, well, that's not so good, right? Yes. So a lot of my rebels, you know, they deal with a little bit of that conflict in their mind of like, this is where I want to go. I want to go do these big things. And yet I know I'm not really supported. So you find a lot of isolation and imposter syndrome and things like that amongst my archetype as well. Uh, but they're the outliers. They're the ones that prove the impossible is possible every day. Those are the rebels. Wow. I love it. Great explanation. And I would like to go just a little bit deeper. Um, because one of the things that, that you're the founder of is is the Rebel Code. Hmm. Would you mind sharing with us, like, what what is that? Well, I'll give you the um, the chunked up uh, answer to Rebel Code. Okay. One of the things that we've obsessively pursued, or I've obsessively pursued for a very long time, is the study of rebels from history, right? The studies of rebels in industry, rebels um, just in general in history. If you go look at history books, right, go read Good to Great, right? Yeah. The reason why those guys are in that book, okay, is because they were rebels, right? Yeah. They went and did something nobody else had accomplished, and they did it in a big way. Yeah. Those, it's the rebels that rewrite history. I, the ones that really write the history books are, are those rebels, right? So what we've done is between them and all the clients that we've worked with that are that archetype as well, is we've asked a lot of questions and collected a lot of data as to what makes them who they are and how do they seem to go at life, right? What, in what way do they go at life? There seems to be some common denominators, some, some you know, universal qualifiers, if you will, amongst all of them. And that's what we've boiled down to what we call the rebel code. 
Now, my rebels don't really like systems and frameworks and stuff. <laughs> like, they just they don't <laughs> like boxes, right? Um, so we don't necessarily call it like a framework, but that's actually what a rebel code really is. So if somebody works with us in the coaching capacity, we're actually implementing what we have found to be somewhat of that framework amongst rebels so that we can go through each category with our clients to help to help elevate their quality of life, right? So um, personally and professionally. So it's that's really what the rebel code refers to. It's how the rebels of history have gone at life and made it extraordinary. Awesome. You do, you teach a framework um, uh, when it comes to like the neuro reset process, right? This is something that is uh, uh, very particular to your organization. Uh, so you, you take a, you, you teach a framework um, for the resetting of that. And then you also I love this. You obliterate resistance. Like, I mean, you don't just get rid of it. You just completely obliterate it. So I'd love to go just a little bit into that. Like, first of all, how do you, how do you do that? Cause that's a, once again, this is another re- very powerful, powerful world word that you're using. So you've got to have a strong tactic with it. Yeah. And I'll tell you this. So first, first things required in order for that to work and it, to obliterate anything is the client has to want that. They have to super want and super be willing and vulnerable and uncomfortable to go into that process. Some people like to hold on to their resistance because it gets them something we refer to as secondary gain. Um, It basically gets them a reward. Well, if I hold on to my victim mentality and then I get people to check on me and care about me and affirm me and all these things, right? So the client has to be willing to understand, recognize, and um agree that those things are not working for them and they want to let them go Mm -hmm. and then the process by by working with us is i hate to say it because it's going to sound so simple to everybody listening but it's really not is we ask a ton of daring and deep questions to have deep insights with the client we're eliciting from them and extracting everything you can imagine. I want to be completely inappropriate. I'll say things like, we're gonna go way up your skirt. We're gonna get every detail of who you are and and what your framework of who you are so that we can uncover, unlock all kinds of things, unlock what's holding them back, what's draining their focus and energy, what limiting beliefs they may be carrying, what trauma or past experiences, what meanings have they associated to things that aren't working for them or are, and then also accessing with them parts of themselves they may have never even accessed before or even realized was still hiding there from when they were a child or like just really helping them tap into their genius zone at a level they never have. And when you do those two things together, that's what obliterates all the resistance. So it's kind of like cutting a lot of bungee cords tied around you that are no longer pulling you back anymore. And uh, we we refer to that as um, heading into flow state or peak state um, all the time. You know, I love that you mentioned and you talk about a uh, flow state because once again, as athletes and, and I know that you have a heart for military uh, men and women as well too. Like there's, there's, you know, when you do the training and you've done it enough, there are, there are moments when you are in that flow state. There's times in business where you're just like, man, everything is just clicking. I'm, you know, I say all the right things, all the right things are happening. I feel like we're making great momentum and going forward. I'd love for you to talk about, you know, what your idea of the of flow state looks like in professionals, in the modern day rebel. Yeah. So you mentioned athletes. So I love my athletes because they talk about things like being in the zone right. or being in the pocket, right? And that's that moment when you just seem to be like in a state of there's no time, there's yeah. no there's no friction, there's no gravity, ideas just flow, you're not distracted, you're not having those quote unquote ADHD moments, I reject labels for everyone, but you know, like you're not chasing tiny, tiny pennies and squirrels, like things just seem to come out of you in a way that they, they don't normally, and before you realize it, you've just knocked something out. A good example would be, and this is silly, but like um, a Jerry Maguire movie, right? The very beginning of the movie, you know, he gets inspired to write this manifesto, and you know, he gets yeah. in the zone that night, and he knocks out this huge manifesto, it completely changes his life, good or bad, we can argue that later, but the reality is that that's a moment of somebody just being in flow and being in the zone, so you get rid of anything that would hold you back from whatever that is, okay? We all love living there, right? Um, another good example, if anybody's watched the movie Finding Nemo, I love the part with the turtles and they're just hanging out, right? Like <laughs> there's no, nothing, nothing pushing them back. They're just so chill and yet they're going super fast. That's what flow can feel like. And so if you can imagine if you're listening, that you could go after every project 
right? Every business that you're going to scale, multiple businesses, or even going after personal goals, your personal health and fitness, whatever that might be, and doing it in a way where you don't have resistance, like what would that do for you? What would that create for you, right? That's how you see these people do these amazing things and they have the same number of hours in the day that you do. The reality is that they've tapped into flow and you yeah. just haven't yet. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I'd love to go a little bit granular in this because uh, I'd love to hear from your experience. You know, when you when you get a client and they're a, they're a match for you and you are a match for them, and you you know I'm sure that you do the interview process. And you're like, okay, so what are the things that are you know what what do you want to work on? And I know that a lot of people that I talk to, at first they start in one direction, like, oh, I want to fix this, right? And so many times it's like, I want my business to explode. I want more, you know, I want to, I want to create, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars. But then when you really get into it, it's actually something else that needs to be healed, right? It's actually something else. You're like, okay, that's not like what you thought about was not really when you. Is that your experience, or like from your personal experience with clients? Like, what are you seeing? usually is the root of that or the direction that typically you have to go in order to heal those other areas that might be a little more superficial. Yeah. So again, we go through a, a deep question process to uncover some of that stuff. Yeah. And sometimes to the chagrin of the client, because they come to me with a presenting problem and through the, through the, the, through masterful questions, right. We determine that that isn't at all the presenting problem and, or there's something deeper that's creating that problem, right. Maybe they're, they're talking about something surface, but there's something in the roots that's actually producing that fruit. Right. Um, so for most people, they have an idea of what's going on with them, right? Wow. And sometimes it's their ego putting a little filter around it. Of, well, I don't really have that problem. So this is my problem, right? Yeah. Um, we have to unlock, in order for us to be super effective at what we do with clients, we do need to get down to the real, the real stuff, okay? And so I will tell you, it's a very intimate and emotional process for all clients. We get down to base beliefs, values, and emotions because that's where everything's driven from. Yeah. And you're touching on something that I, I, I think is important. I have a list of seven things that, in fact, we're getting ready to bunch through seven different videos on it um, that I believe uh, are that super impact performance for high achievers a lot. Like they really need to be super aware of paying attention to them. And one of them is what I call congruency or a lack of congruency that who they are at their core, at their values and believe what they really want their life to have, hold, and feel like is not at all what they're going after. And when you're doing that, you're living in resistance. You're living like two rams beating each other up all the time, right? Like, I want this, but I don't want this. I want this, but I don't want this. You can't operate that way. Mm -hmm. And so you're really, you'll, you won't go anywhere. You want to move the needle forward in, in ex exponential ways. You have to make sure that both you, parts of you are going in the same direction. Right, that what you want for your life matches what you're how you're doing it, and it can be as simple as that. If you don't want to work, that you're good at outsourcing and delegating and expanding your team that way, right? Or it could be as, as big as you want to go after a certain type of passion project, right? And and not choosing something that's you know going to pay the bills versus what you really love, right? So we have to step into what that is, and I'll tell you what, man, that a lot of clients do 180s. Like they, they step right into that in the first 30 days of working with us. And they're so relieved that not only did they get to find themselves, they got to go step back to that. And somebody was helping them do that yeah. is with them there. And also that they get to go do it, you know? So it, it's super cool. Um, just to give you like an actual example, we have a client right now that insisted, he just got out of the military, um, retired, insisted that he would make all his money in real estate, specifically real estate investing. Um, it's a hustle and grind, the niche he was trying to go after. He is not a hustle and grind mentality. He's more like a hang loose, hang 10 kind of guy. <laughs> and his love is uh, adrenaline sports and outdoor activities and just being outside, right? Yeah. And I could tell that within the first hour of talking with him. Well, he went from chasing this real estate thing and putting a lot, risking a lot, and putting a lot on the line for that to flipping the switch like this in the first 30 days to building his own adventure business. Um, and he's blowing up in the adventure space. So, you know, that's a picture of someone stepping into what's congruent for them. And then they really experience results. Is it sometimes just sitting back and giving and helping them give themselves permission to chase that, you think? Hmm. 
Or how about this, uh, helping them access the part of themselves that gives them permission. Yeah. Because I think that's the neurological gift there is that when they can find a part of themselves that says, hell yeah, that's what I want. Yeah. And yes, yeah. we can go do this without yeah. any guilt or shame or negative emotions or shoulds or expectations telling them opposite, like no other voice in their head working against that. When you can give them the gift of accessing that for themselves, that's when you really, really see a, a shift and a change for them. Yeah, it, I love external doesn't help; it's internal. Yeah, I I love the fact that you talked about congruency, and we see so so much of that and a lack of congruency in people's lives, uh, and how you're able to harness that. I, I'm just curious, you know, have you because you've been doing this um, for a number of years. Have you seen a switch? Have you seen a change uh, over the last, you know, of course, obviously we get through a pandemic, we go through all of those hardships. Um, we go through all of just like the unknown, the uncertainty. And then now we're left on the aftermath of this. Uh, are you seeing a different type of a leader that is is, is required nowadays? Mm. Well, there's a complex answer to that. Am I seeing a different leader? Not yes and no. I think that what, ha what I'm, I teach something called values levels of consciousness. It's not something I've not invented the wheel. A lot of people talk about this. It's a, it's a growth process people go through. I think when COVID happened, you know, what happened was that a lot of people, it shifted them in their growth rapidly. They had to make the adjustments. Those that were had, those that had high self-awareness, mm -hmm. who were viscerally connected to their greater purpose of where they were headed, they allowed themselves to do that work to have that shift of growth. Yeah. Others who weren't quite there yet in their growth, you know, mm -hmm. potentially resisted the shift longer, right? So mm -hmm. I think that that would happen regardless of what happens in our market. We're in a highly volatile time right now. We're, we're in a place where technology is rapidly evolving faster than we can even keep up with it. And, you know, it's, it's crazy, right? So it doesn't, COVID happened, but it's happening every day. Yeah. And so I think for leaders, it's just, are they willing to be super self-aware? Are they willing to be adaptable? And are they willing to stay viscerally and obsessively connected to what they want, that purpose-driven decision for what's behind what they're doing, which is above metrics like revenue and units sold or whatever other metrics they want to go after. So um, I think that's what we're seeing is that some people have done the evolution because they realized how, what it would do for them and others are sitting there a little bit stuck maybe afraid um and those are great clients what we can work with to help them go through that shift that's great i love that uh, that's really great insight what are you seeing um you know for leaders that you're working with right now uh what do you, what are you seeing right now is there is the biggest maybe the biggest challenge that they typically face um i know you can't say wow everybody's facing this thing but is it uh uh, you know, is it the inner critic that they continue to fight? Is it, um, you know, I don't know if I'm really am worried, wor I'm worried about the the future. Like, what are you seeing um, on a, maybe on the most consistent basis that you can? Yeah, I, I'm going to say two things pop to mind. It's almost equal. Uh, and they kind of go together also. Or one compounds the other. Um, and you touched on it, which is some doubt right? Yeah. Doubt and uncertainty. Doubt and uncertainty can lead to a lack of confidence, right? Um, and it can create a wormhole scenario where you, how some people will cope with doubt and uncertainty by becoming workaholics or becoming worse perfectionists than they already are, which you often see in high achievers. Yeah. And so when they start going that direction, then they set themselves up for even further failure because they're no longer flexible, right? And they're attaching themselves to a result that they're likely attaching to their self-worth. And then when they don't get the result, it just makes it even, even worse. They're attaching themselves to things they can't control, mm. right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. And so when you're, especially if you're in a business that's highly subjective to variabilities, like in the market and things like that, I work with a lot of people who are in positions like that, especially my Inc. 100 people, my traders, people like that. You know, if you attach yourself to something that's highly variable, then you're, you're, you're you have no control. You're at the ebb and flow of everything. Yeah. And then what that does is it causes procrastination, shut down, stuck. And guess what else they'll do? Isolate themselves. Yeah. So the other thing that happens is that they isolate. Now they're taking themselves away from what they need from an inspiration standpoint from a challenge from challenging their creativity and their innovative sides of themselves and they start to hide from the world and what does that do it takes the confidence down even further creating yeah. even more doubt so it becomes a compounding wormhole just taking them down right so 
I, I will tell you that affects every level of high achiever. And to be quite honest, things like imposter syndrome, you know, 70% of people are said to suffer from that. The reality is that as high achievers, the numbers go up, right? Mm -hmm. And the more you go up the success ladder, the greater those issues actually become because you're carrying even more weight, yeah. more weight of purpose, more weight of who you're taking care of, who you're responsible for, what you said to the world you were going to go do. And so before you know it, it becomes more weight than you're equipped for, yeah. right? And that's where, you know, coaches like us in the performance space help them, you know, uh, kind of bat in the hatches, if you will, and be, be prepared. So. Man, so much of what you're saying, I was just like, I can relate to a lot of that, you know, and I know that a lot of people that are in, are in my circle sitting at, you know, I'm at their table, they're at my table, those are the conversations that we're having. I think it's so absolutely relevant. I'm just curious, you know, I know we can't go into a coaching session by any man means, but like, what are some of the things that you feel are really powerful that people that are just listening to this to say, man, I, I relate to that so much. Like what's one thing that I can do to not be there or to not get in there, or to maybe when I start to think that, that I, I can train myself to get out of it as fast as I possibly can. Yeah, I mean, though, the, honestly, one of the most simplest things that you can do, and this is, again, I'm not inventing the wheel here, but it's it's powerful, and sometimes I think we skip over it, and that is to always, every day, remind yourself of what you've already achieved, what you've already taken control of, what results you went after that you did, you checked that box, what you grew through, what hard things you handled, like all the things going all the way back as far as you can remember. I mean, if you were the first kid to climb the rope thing in gym class, right? The rope um, ladder, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. Big deal back then. I remember what a big deal that was. And like, I was one of those kids that had to do it right, right away. Um, but like, if you did it and you were the first one to ring the bell, like, celebrating yourself all the way back to that because that creates the muscle reflex uh, that you can continue to pivot do hard things handle hard things you know that you can control the, the what you can control etc so celebrate achievements in fact you know i'm not i think it's ed my lad i can't think who i was listening to one day i was like oh they said something i say all the time it's awesome um you know vision boards are great right we want to have a clear understanding of where we're headed and for some people who are visual that's cool i don't i'm not always a proponent of those necessarily mm -hmm. but to me it's more important to do whatever you can to give yourself easy access to everything you've already done right? For some people that might mean reading your resume every morning. For some of you that might mean looking at awards that you've gotten. I, I don't know, whatever it is, but tell yourself how great you are as a person, because you wouldn't be where you are and have risen to the challenges you have if you didn't have some mad skills, right? And some super powerful experiences that you got through. So celebrate achievements. That will help blow doubt right out of the water almost every time. Well, I love that. You know, I think once again, as you, as you're saying that it just kind of so much of it resonated with what I am experiencing uh, when we're, when we're talking to our leadership within their companies, or just even like, you know, you get that self doubt because maybe you have a setback, you have a failure and how you have to go back to that positivity and remind yourself of all of the great things that you have done and you are doing. We oftentimes, especially as leaders, and as you would say, the rebellious leaders, um, how we just, we, we have an accomplishment and then we just move on. Right. Yeah. It's like, okay, what's the next thing that right? we check that box. And now we got to go on to the next thing and how really to tell is. Yourself. say it again. You forget to tell yourself, you know, like stop for a minute and just revel in that. Yeah. Well, what we've heard though, I think so much. And so often is that, and we've, or we maybe we've seen some horrible examples of people that they just celebrate too long. Right. They make this one accomplishment. And it's like, are you like, you're still celebrating your, touchdown pass that you threw in high school and you're 36 years old, right? That's kind of like, and people do that in business though. And then you wonder why they aren't successful is because they're still worried. They're still celebrating the things they did a year ago. Absolutely. Absolutely. And a lot of times what that comes down to, we sniff that out too, right? Yeah. And when I sense that's happening with a client, they're, they're lacking where they want to go next. Yeah. Right. So they're still living in the past because they're too afraid of where the future could be. They, 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 there's some fears there of their future and some uncertainties and and misdirection that they're suffering from. So we we try to turn them around in our world. We call it turning around in the hallway. There's this whole thing we use as an uh, anchor for all of our clients. But we got to turn around to look the other direction for a minute. Um. So that that's usually a trigger for that. But you said something I, I think too that's super important about celebrating or celebrating. Um things are still celebrating things. People forget to, to me, yes, they stay there too long, but I think they really don't 
think to celebrate them. Like yeah. we tend to be as high achievers oftentimes, and I reject this for anybody, if you're, if you're not this way, great. We tend to be a little bit more self-deprecating and hold ourselves to higher standards, right? We give ourselves this, again, these unreasonably, this unreasonable and unorthodox, unconventional lists that are well beyond what the average guy even goes after, right? And so when we hit things, we're like, oh yeah, well, that was easy for me. And, or, well, I had to do that anyway. Like we don't really sit there for a minute and say, oh, hell yeah. Like nobody else could have done that, right? Giving yourself that I think is super important. Yeah, I, that's great. Great advice here. Uh, you know, Amy, as we kind of wrap this up here, uh, first of all, I love what you're doing. Uh, really amazing, powerful stuff. If people want to continue to find more about what you and your companies do, where can they, where can they track you down? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm being told right now to tell people to find me on Instagram. Um, so <laughs> Build the platform. Yeah, right. We have this whole team, supposedly, that's like behind me. Um, I, so I am not all the things. Um, I would also just invite people to go to our websites, ruleswrewritten.com. If you're interested in finding out more of how to work with us or just in general want to stay in touch with us for trainings or whatever, um, book a one-on-one -on -one discovery call. One of the master coaches here will have a chat with you. Um, it's a great deep dive opportunity for those that do it. Um, and who knows, we may end up getting to know each other long term. So uh, we just like to bring value to as many as we can. Oh, love it. And then uh, as we kind of, as we end the show here, um, any, you know, we've got a bunch of entrepreneurs. We've got a lot, we've got a lot of rebels. There's no doubt about it. I've got, I've got some in me for sure. Um, parting words uh, for those that are aspiring to do great things in life. Uh, what would you want to say to them as you've got their attention right now? Yeah, I would say, I said we go after it. The rebels are the ones that write history. And one of the most, and excuse my French, one of the most badass rebels in history ever is the gentleman on that painting right behind you, right? If you think about what he accomplished it, and don't, don't even get me started on his 12 misfits that followed him, right? So, <laughs> okay. so you know, if, if you want to change history, if, if, and I don't mean just history for the world, I mean your own. You know, if you're ready to change your history, the story that it, what was that you were supposed to be or needed to be or had to be, or even right now you're feeling like you're obligated and stuck where you are, but what you really are meant for is greatness in a whole nother way or a whole nother place, right? Rewrite your story, right? Rewrite the yeah. rules right now. Take charge, rewrite the rules and change your history because that will change the history of everyone after you. So um, it's the only thing, honestly, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, but you know, God created us with one, with one with one um uh he charged us with one thing he says i'm giving you this power it's all yours live it to its utmost that's all i'm charging you with is take who you are authentically to the world in as big a way as you can and if you don't take charge of what your history is going to be what people are going to write in books about you when you, you know it's now or never yeah if my mic was not attached to this chair i would literally drop it because that was such a great mic drop moment right there, Amy. <laughs> so <laughs> you did awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, this has been an absolute pleasure. I'm ready to go tackle some big stuff in my life. I will not, I'm not gonna lie, lady. I'm, I'm pretty stoked. Right now, so as a coach, uh, I want to, you got to give me the list. I want to know all the things I'll hold you accountable. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can, I have no problem being congruent in that for sure in my life. So, all right, you guys, uh, what an amazing podcast this was with our gal, Amy, uh, go follow her, go track, uh, her down and, and see what you can do to connect with her. Um, I mean, we're talking, you had 30 minutes with her today. What could you do in 30, in, in 30 days with her? And, uh, you know, the only fee for this show is to get it into the hands of somebody else, somebody else that needs to hear this message that maybe be lost, that might be lost and wondering, Hey, I know I'm meant for greatness. How do I get to that next level? There's no doubt about it that Amy can help them get them there. So absolutely love you. Have a fantastic rest of your day and we'll talk to you soon. Ooh.